<coughs> to start, <laughs> a minor dictation. <laughs> a minor dictation? A small dictation today. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, y'all. Much different style video here today. I feel compelled and moved to share this with you. Why, I don't know, but there's various reasons. And it's, you know, it's a throwback to story time times. But I figured we'd, you know, delve into some dialogue of a more deeper look at my past relative to this, you know, this tale, but stuff about me, kind of this song, the fact that it was one of my first recorded songs like ever. There's like people connected to it and stuff. And there's just a whole host of characters involved and things that occur. And we're going to break down, we're going to talk about some like, you know, weed and stuff and our whole experience with that. And then drug and drugs uh, and, uh, you know, these things and, you know, the death of a friend and, but how this all unfolded. So anyways, uh, I'm going to play this song here that me and this dude that I knew recorded together at his house. Uh, it was one of my first really well done songs. I had recorded other ones at home, um, but I didn't have awesome equipment kind of thing. And, uh, and he did so, but how we connected is insane. It doesn't even make sense. It's like absolute kismet. I'm going to insert the track. You can listen to it now. It's, you know, two minutes and 30 seconds or something like that. Uh, it features the artist, Daniel Johnston, Johnson, Johnston, Johnson, Daniel Johnson, I think is his name. And he was, a a very unique, wacky individual who was, you know, he was relatively, I, he's underground pop, like he was popular. He had like a mad genius about him. I do believe he was on like the spectrum to some degree. Like he was definitely not completely right in his head. Like I think he had issues, but he, I don't know. He, his, his music and his artistry is is amazing and he had this really unique kind of weird voice that it's good but it's kind of not the greatest and stuff he, he's 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 an interesting guy to listen to if you've never listened to him give him a go he's he's he his story is quite the story i'll just say that anyways he's featured on the hook he sampled on this really boom bappy beat that you know we made and then we sampled him on the hook we put in him on the hook and um and then i filled in the verses and i actually do a call and response with him on the hook essentially too uh as well so anyways i will insert the song here you can listen to it through and then i'll be back to explain the whole story okay So get your fellows that like to bellow smoke out the hello trap Roll it with a yellow wrap, uh, or a chocolate one Either way, just chop it up and drop it in And get to twisting up and bump the system up The crystal puff, this stuff's just an instant fuck, uh, yeah We get fucked off the proper and bong hits And we don't give a fuck if it's proper or wrong It's a lifestyle of ours We smile because we stay high off the promised buds The finest blunts, the ones at the final buzz Weed, it's a need and a timeless drug Go seed it beneath, down inside our lungs and I would run and motherfucker I would come to the side of my man But I ain't riding with him I'm riding with her Mary Jane I confide in my girl so Every time you look at me Every time that you look at me Look at me You see the monster in my eyes You see the monster yeah You see the monster Every time you look at me Every time that you look at me Look at me You see the monster in my eyes 
You see the monster, yeah, you see a rose Birds with the zigzags, bloom to be exact And a few are looking suitable, soon to be intact Little cubicles, look how beautifully they stack And they catch at the edges where the glue will be attached So every time you see me, the red devil's in my eye And if ever I decide to quit smoking weed and step aside From getting high, y'all together in this life is side I guess this was just inevitable, right? But not likely, nah, I don't wanna quit Honestly, I'ma probably light a split up on this beat Obsessed with chronically, I ingest them chronically I just need a hit or two to get me by and calm me Please, I'm fucking on my knees Begging for the mercy of a kiss and a hug From my lips to my first sweet love With her bursting butt, she taunts it in the mind She's in my life, so you'll see the monster in my eyes forever Every time you look at me Every time that you look at me, look at me You see the monster Monster, yeah, you see the monster. Every time you look at me, every time that you look at me, look at me, you see the monster in my eyes. You see the monster, yeah, you see the monster. Welcome back. So now that you've listened to it, you'll understand that there are some amateurish moments in it. There's a lot of my tonalities and inflections, a lot of sibilance on my S's. Um, I was trying to use a certain tone back then because I was trying to be a little more thug in my presentation or a little more gangster in my my speech. Um, you'll also notice there's like some there's a one really evident moment where there's like a breath issue, like I was running out of breath for the take, and I forced it, and like I got through that moment in the take. But we didn't edit it out back then or do a retake. Like we were just we were still kind of new to the game. That said, the, the production quality is pretty pretty good. The vocals are good. The beat is good. Uh, the vocals are clear, I should say. Um, my execution of them is not the greatest, but you'll also understand that um, that was a track basically about, um, it was an ode to weed, because I used to smoke a ton of weed. I used to love weed. Uh, first smoked weed when I was like 14, and then I liked it ever from that ever since from that time until I was like, Mm, 22 and I just it, it no longer served me it kind of just turned on me it wasn't uh, useful anymore in my life and you know I tried it a few times later on after having like various panic attacks and stuff but uh, it would always do the same thing to me I just I grew out of it I didn't like it anymore but it may serve you still uh, I know it is a very useful tool for people, and uh, I think you should smoke all the weed you want as long as, like, it's helping you, you know? But, okay, so that being said, in this song, I guess when I heard the Daniel Johnston cut about, you see, the monster in my eyes, it was reminding me of a time where, like, it was almost like when I would come home stoned or da-da-da-da-da, people who didn't agree with it, you would see the monster in my eyes, the red devil, because the you know, you get red eyes when you're high, but you know, it was also my ode to weed. I'm saying how much, like I loved it, right? Like I loved, I, it's, I'm praising weed because it brought me and my friends together. We hung out, we sessioned and uh, we would have a lot of fun. We'd, you know, fuck around, make music and, you know, watch shit, go just be, you know, teenagers and shit. So, um, so there's like a dichotomy in there though because I was also in my head kind of knowing that like it's this devil in my eyes that like other people are seeing me as this you know not just like you know it's not the best practice probably you should probably just not do it it's not gonna bring you anywhere good in life type thing so it's like seeing the devil in your eyes so anyways how I meet this guy is insane so I started making music like young, early. So um, he, this was this song I probably recorded in I want to say like 2005 or six maybe. Yeah, about there. So at the time, this is when the internet's still not like pretty newish in a sense. Um, there was these things called uh, rap battle forums. So there was it was called Network 54. And you could go on and there would be members in this forum who were also rappers, but you would have text battles. You'd write a verse as like a diss or whatever, 
Or you could just write a verse and people would critique it or comment on it and say, oh, this is dope or this, this, this. Um, and so I would have these text battles and we would all have like the stupidest handles. Like mine was talk sick. So T-A-L-K-S-I-C-K, -S -S talk sick. Cause I talk sick. Like it's like you're young and you're trying to find your rap name and your rap name back then had to be some like witty metaphorical twist on words, like some, you know what I mean? Uh, wordplay type shit. Uh, Cause it was all about wordplay back then. That's what it, hip hop was so much more about wordplay and like linguistics and linguistic cunning and and how to how to how to use metaphors and and uh i don't know it was a more complex art i feel like back then people sometimes still do it now but not as much really um though it's still appreciated in 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 rap for sure you know there's subsects and there's sub genres and all that stuff too so you got your backpackers you got your heads you got the underground and all that you got uh, your boom bap and all that so anyway so we would some we would battle uh, on these on on these net on this network on this forum um and you'd start to get to know guys you'd see them there all the time uh and then at one point we were doing audio disses but they were like super shit quality because most of us were like young with cool edit and you know a 25 dollar mic from Best Buy or whatever, Radio Shack, and it was like you just plug it directly into the sound port on your, uh, your, your PC tower, and it just, you know, it wasn't the greatest thing. It's just, or you might have a headset mic or something like that, and you're just learning and shit. So you're, you're just learning the software. You're just learning about audio and how it all works. But uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, I start communicating with this guy, and we're talking, and we're just like, oh, where do you live at in the world, basically? Because we're just trying to get to know each other at that point. Because you would add some of these guys on like MSN or whatever. You'd like get to like make friends with these fellow rappers, but you'd be like, where are you in the world? And this guy goes, <laughs> he goes, I'm from Thunder Bay, Ontario. And I'm like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, so am I. <laughs> and he's like, what? What are the chances of that? Like, there's no chances of that. That seems insane. Like, there's no way that's real. So he go, I go, look, so where do you live? And he says, like, a place right where I know. Turns out this guy lives literally, I want to say, seven blocks from me. <laughs> so I go, yo, like, w like, we should meet up, I guess, and stuff. Because he's like, I have recording equipment at my house, like, legitimate shit. So I go to his house, and he does. He's got a built booth and a, or, or a booth built in a spare room nice and like acoustically treated he's got a, a legit professional condenser mic like a nice one like a neumann um and he's got that running into his setup he's got all the preamps he's got everything he's he's got like the good setup especially for back then um but he was one year younger than me i think yeah one year younger than me uh his name was garrick by the way so we start, we hang out we're hanging out i go over that night we we smoke up obviously and then we make that song that night and yeah like the vocals are pretty clean but we're also kind of inexperienced but so we were like oh this is dope like we're gonna be homies now for sure because you live right there i live right here we're, we're into this rap shit da -da 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 -da. so we start hanging out as boys and smoking and da -da -da, making music and whatever and, uh, you know, time moves on and we graduate from weed into more harsh things, namely blow. Um, so we get, you know, we start messing with that. I have other friends messing with it and stuff. And uh, at a certain point, I just, he started to really devolve into this really rough character it took a hold of him he got addicted like addicted i was always able to just use it as a fun a little charlie on the weekend you know what i mean or maybe a little more than that I, i'll be honest but it wasn't a problem for me it was it was a fun time thing but i always balanced my life i always was i made sure i was passing school i made sure i was you know everything like i wasn't consumed by it right so he starts going down 
that road. Also, I should mention the reason why I'm talking about this song and how it even came to me right now is because I was talking to a subscriber recently. I'd just been we've been having dialogue about whatever, main, namely a lot of music stuff and artist artistry shit. Um, but they were uh, making me think about music and my music, and I was like, you know, diving into my records in my email to to dig up things way from my past. And I happened to find this track. And I was like, oh, this is old, and this is a good ass story. So. <laughs> So anyway, as we make the song, um, he's fall, like fallen into his addiction with, uh, with Blow. And uh, <laughs> we were working, we both worked, we were working at this call center doing rebates on, on the phone. You just, you just issue rebates to customers for like Walgreens and uh, Kmart and all these places. And... Uh, <laughs> And this other guy that works there named uh, Young Roz was his name. His name was Ross, but he's uh, he was a black dude from Toronto who was in Thunder Bay. Had plans to get back to Toronto though at some point because he was like, this snow shit is whack. But at that time, it's like I had never even hung out with a black dude, right? Like for real in my Mayo ass town. Um, so it gets out. He's like that that we rap but he raps too. So I show him this song, this song specifically that you just listened to. And he's like, yo, I really thought this was going to be fucking whack, but this is dope. This is actually dope. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we're kind of doing music and shit and hanging out and together and, and just, you know, cooking up beats and all that type of stuff. So <laughs> I'll link, I'll link actually, just for reference sake, to, 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 he switched, he took the young off and went with just ROZ. Um, but there's a track from, of his from 2010, I'll link down below with Big Lean. But he did get back to Toronto and he made moves in his own space in, in music. Um, I think he turned into more into like a more management type person for, for other artists. But uh <laughs> I just figured I'd, I'd, I'd add that in for details in the story. So anyways, so the last time I see the, the first dude, my, my, my buddy Garrick, is um, I'm going to pick up off him. And at this point, I know that he's in a bad way, but he's hanging around a bunch of people that I don't want to hang around because they are degenerates. Like, I, I can see where the train's going, basically. Um, and I, I go to pick up off him and like the guy is just a wreck and his girlfriend at the time I was like I need to have a talk with you outside like what's going on here like, like he's is there some way we can help this guy or what and she was she was kind of in the game too though she was influenced by him but she knew shit was not good and I was just like how do we is there a way to help him or what? And she's like, I don't know. He's just, he's, he's just doing his own thing right now. And he's just in a weird space. So, and the weird space was like, he literally became a different human being. He was like one of the nicest dudes ever when we hung out. He was like so sweet to his mom, so sweet to like the women that he was, dating or seeing like and he he basically wiped this one girl up named Sharon but um and he was extre extremely nice to me but I could see that whatever had taken a hold of him I certainly think it demonic through the drugs he was an entirely different person he was he was gone I was like he Garrick doesn't exist anymore there's something else like in him that's controlling him it, it was crazy so when i saw him the last time it just it, it i could see like it really honestly and that's the weird correlation between the song you see the monster in my eyes and i say in in my verse you could see the red devil in my eye i could like see it in his eyes and uh so that was like tripping me out i'm like this guy is like literally possessed right now i feel like i feel as if 
So anyways, I would eventually move to Toronto and then I knew that he had ongoing struggles. And not too long after I moved to Toronto did I hear that he had finally o overdosed and died. So there's way more tangents off this guy and how I moved to Toronto and people I met around him and stuff. But those are like, that's a, that's like literally my whole life. That's a life tale that would take videos. But the, syn the synchronicities and things that had to occur for all that are other videos. But that'll basically wrap this video in the sense of like, I found this old, this relic of a track. I figured I'd share it. I personally think it's not like the greatest thing ever by any means, by any stretch of the word. But the tale that's linked to it, I thought was worthy of, of telling you of, you know, that it would be at least sort of interesting. So, yeah, you, know, you can leave what you want down below. And, uh, and yeah, I, I just want to share that with you simply because it, was, it just was running through my head. I'm like, ah, I sh I, for some reason, I just want to share this. So there you go. Deep Delve Hoodie Share, okay? And maybe you like the track. It's definitely for the weed smokers. Like if you're smoking weed right now and you, you're vibing and you might enjoy it, then, then hey, you go ahead and you enjoy that. I don't want to blow your buzz. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm going to end this one now here. All right. Deuces. <laughs>